everybody, it's Rory from ANS Gear, and we're gonna look at a speed feed for a rotor today. So this is the Dai Quick Feed 6.0. This is their latest version of their Quick Feed that they did for their own loader. A um, Couple of the first versions that they produced were not the best. They had a lot of problems with sagging down. They just became super weak after a couple times worth of play. So the newest version, the 6.0, they've solved all those problems. They've gone with some different materials to make it more resilient. Uh, to hold up and not just turn into a big giant hole that doesn't do anything. So if you have one and you like the rotor, uh, the quick feed design, I like this kind of like swirl pattern that they've done here. Um, pick one up, 6.0. Uh, so we'll, we'll put one in. I know we've done videos uh, in the past on how to install these, but we'll do a refresher for you, kind of go through it. Uh, what you're going to need is a Phillips head screwdriver and some sort of thinner piece of metal. <laughs> You can use an Allen key, I'm gonna use one. Uh, you could use a punch that's thin. You could use really uh, just a piece of uh, flathead screwdriver, I guess you could use that as well. Um, but we're gonna use this and I'll show you why. First things first, we're gonna open the lid and we're gonna take off the top, uh, the top of the case here, the top of the housing. We don't need to do anything with that. This piece though, we are gonna remove. So we're gonna remove the color kit that sits in the middle right here. We're gonna replace it with a green one. I have an orange one, but I don't want to do an orange one, so we're going to put a green one on it. I've got four screws already out right there. So you've got one, two, three, four, and five. So we will take the fifth screw out and set it to the side. Now with this latest, I guess the latest version of the rotor, I know they switched it a while back. These uh, turrets that, you, that hold the screw in place, they used to be, or they used to have a metal insert inside of them. So when you were tightening down the screw that went into it, you could really tighten it down and get a good, uh, a good tightening on it. Now they've changed the screw design. It's a much coarser threaded screw and there's no more metal insert into here. So you're screwing the screw, you're putting it directly into the plastic body. So be very careful that you don't over tighten it because it will strip out and then it just doesn't grab anymore. So be aware of that. So once we get the top off here or the, the, in the color kit or the color insert out, we need to remove the lid. Now that's where this comes in handy. Underneath here or in here, there is a bar that runs back and forth all the way across. And that's the pivot for the lid right here. We wanna get that out. We wanna move the bar over and we wanna take the lid out. But you cannot push the pivot bar all the way through because of the shape of this thing, because it is rounded on the top there is not enough space to actually push the bar completely out from one side to the other and take it out. It just doesn't fit. So what you have to do is you have to push it kind of halfway over or until it's inside here. And then we're going to lift it out from the top. So we're going to take our Allen key and we're actually going to push the bar to the side right there. So now the edge, you can see the edge popped out over here, but it's now flush with the inside right here. That's going to let me turn it on its side and it's going to let me kind of pivot it out this way. Now, depending on how far I was able to get that in there, it's going to let me know if I get it out. It looks like I might have to go a little bit further. I might have to use something slightly smaller than this Allen key. Let me see if I can got it there. Yeah, I did. Okay. So now I pushed it far enough in where I can actually lift it up and bring it out. Now I don't want to just twist it over because I'm going to be bending this part that's on the other side and I don't want to ruin the plastic or anything. So once I get it up like this, you can see that the bar has cleared the casing right now. I can take this and I can push the bar back forward. See how it poked out there now? I can push it the other way and then I can kind of wiggle it out like this. Now what I've done by doing it this way, the spring that is inside here that helps pop the lid open when you undo it. I haven't lost it and it's still under tension. It's under load right here. So when I go to put it back together, it's much simpler to put it together this way than trying to manually compress the spring by hand and then feed the stick through there. It doesn't work that way. So to put it back together, if I was going to, I would just push the bar all the way over. I would drop it in like this and then I would push the bar back through and then lay it all the way in and then slide the bar back over. So it makes it very simple to put back together if you take it apart properly. So we've got it off. Easy peasy. Now we're going to take our um, speed feed here. 
our quick feed, and we're going to put it on our top lid. First thing we're going to do is line up the these two cuts right here. There's rounded cuts, and there's two holes right here. We want to make sure that those two pieces line up with each other. So we're going to set it down so that those holes line up. And once that's on there, we're going to take the top and we're going to put it back over. Like that. And if you've lined up everything perfectly around the top, the lid should just kind of just go back together, or the top case should just go right back on. We'll take our screws and put them back in. Now again, as we tighten these down, we don't want to overdo it. When I put mine together, uh, I just take all four or all five screws and I put them in just till they become tight. I do not tighten them down yet. So I'm going to put them in just to where I feel the back pressure on them. I'm going to stop. I'm going to get all of them in first. I've noticed over doing this many, many, many times, if you tighten these four down first, usually that leaves the lip. You can see how that's sticking up slightly. Uh, maybe you can't see it, but it's not flush with the body. When these are all tight, and then you go to tighten this last one down and try to pull that, that tip down or the front down, because these are not letting this slide or move at all, there's a really good chance to strip this out without actually getting it to tighten all the way down. So before I tighten these four down, I'm going to tighten the front one down as much as I think possible to get that to go flush like it is right there. And then I can tighten my last four down without worrying about stripping anything out. And never overdo it. You go till they're snug and then stop. So drop that down on there. Close that down, and there we go. We've installed our, our quick feed. Everything, all the, the fins look like they're good. They're all popping back up. We don't have any that are kind of lopsided or anything because we didn't install it properly. It all looks good, and you're ready to go. So um, check them out. A lot of people might not be happy with them because of the way the original ones were, but the 6.0 versions are fantastic. Haven't had any problems with them, and they fit the look of the loaders. So uh, definitely check them out if you have a rotor and you want a speed feed. I know there's a lot of options out there, but Die makes a great one for their own loader. Check them out. Rotor Quick Feeds version 6.0, available through the website. Order yours now through ansgear.com.